Hi, I'm Dr. Amira Shina, head of the Laboratory of Marine Biotoxins at Institut Louis Malade in Tahiti, French Polynesia. For this review on the global occurrences and trends of ciguatera poisoning, I work with two other researchers from my institute, Dr. Clemence Gatti and Tayana Darius, and two ciguatera experts for the Caribbean and the Indian Ocean, Dr. Pat Tester from Ocean Tester LLC, and Dr. Jean-Pascal Code from Arvam in La Réunion Island. Unlike other hub records in HADAT for PSP toxins or DSP toxins, for instance, which mostly relate to phycotoxins in seafood and potential closures of harvesting areas, the records for ciguatera toxins are almost exclusively associated with human poisonings. Hence, ciguatera has at least three known impacts on human populations, health impact, socioeconomic impacts, and cultural impacts, which often go unrecognized. The ciguatera health impacts relates to the lack of an effective treatment, the lack of immunity in ciguatera victims, and increased sensitivity to fish product following a first poisoning, the existence of chronic symptoms in at least 20% of patients, and the high morbidity rate associated with this illness despite a low fatality rate. Globally, the socioeconomic impacts from ciguatera exceed that from any other forms of HABs and include the cost of illness, the loss of a food source, the loss of income due to the slowdown or closure of coral reef fish distribution markets, the slowdown in tourism and recreational activities, and of course, the cost derived from monitoring programs. On top of that, in some Pacific islands, the fear of ciguatera poisoning can even lead to a permanent dietary shift within local communities, and in some cases to a disruption in the transmission of traditional subsistence fishing knowledge between generations. A quick glance at the ciguatera-related data presently available in the HADAT and OBIS databases clearly shows significant gaps in data entry. HADAT holds records of ciguatera events with human impact, while OBIS hold published records of Kamiadiscus and Fukuyua occurrences, the two causative organisms of ciguatera. If we look at the CP events reported in HADAT between 1987 and 2017, you can see that the periods covered are not uniform between regions, suggesting these data are likely incomplete. As for OBIS, between 2017 and 2019, four new species of Gambia discus have been described that were not entered in the, the database as of 2019. So building on the momentum imposed by the Global Hub Status Report Initiative, 246 new records of Gambia discus and Fukuyoa occurrences have been recently added to this database and this effort will continue on a regular basis. This map shows the current worldwide distribution of Gambia discus and Fukuyoa based on published data and gray literature. It highlights the fact that extensive monitoring efforts are still needed in regions such as the western coast of Latin America, the southern Atlantic Ocean, and the Indian Ocean, which remain understudied as compared to the Pacific and the Caribbean. Overall, there is a current underestimation of ciguatera cases at a global level. This is due to several gaps and weakness in epidemiological data collection in reporting systems, which impact both the exhaustivity and the accuracy of reports. Between 50,000 to 500,000 people are believed to be affected by ciguatera each year at a global scale. This current uncertainty about the true incidence rate of ciguatera is mainly attributable to the fact that ciguatera is not a notifiable disease. And surveillance program exist only in a limited number of countries or regions. Other issues concern the lack of a diagnostic standard and failure by medical practitioners to recognize ciguatera symptoms. There is also a general reticence 
uh, of the population to concert or seek treatment, especially in endemic areas where many patients tend to rely on traditional medicine for treatment. Overall, it is estimated that the statistic represent only 0.1% to 20% of actual cases in the Caribbean and the Pacific respectively. Another prominent issue is the lack of standardization in data collection methodologies, which makes it difficult to compare incidence rate across regions and data sets. For example, this graph show uh, CP related data obtained through self-reporting via hotline to poison center versus data vetted by the CDC. Although both databases show peak or lower numbers of ciguatera cases occur at the same periods, they are not directly comparable as they represent slightly different geographic regions and reporting practices. Despite these shortcomings, several interesting observations can be highlighted. This map shows the regions where at least one local ciguatera case has been reported, meaning cases linked to the consumption of locally sourced fish contaminated with ciguatoxins. The first observation is that the highest incidence rate are consistently reported from two historical ciguatera endemic areas, the Pacific and the Caribbean region. A situation due in part to the strong reliance of local communities on marine resources. Second, newly affected areas include the Macaronesia with Canary Islands and Madeira, several countries in East and Southeast Asia, New South Wales in Australia and India. Interestingly, this global occurrence map matches both the global distribution of the five species of Gambiodiscus conclusively confirmed as toxic species and also match areas where the toxicity uh, survey studies have confirmed the presence of ciguatoxins in locally caught fish or marine invertebrates. Regional differences in ciguatera poisoning patterns were also found. Ciguatera outbreaks occurring preferentially as large disease clusters due to group consumption of a single contaminated uh, fish are commonly observed in East, Southeast Asia and the Indian Ocean, as opposed to isolated cases, uh, which are most frequently reported from the Pacific and the Caribbean. Unlike what is observed in the Caribbean, Japan, East and Southeast Asia, Canary Islands and Australia, where CP events are mostly almost exclusively in, involve carnivores, in the South Pacific, herbivores such as parrotfish and surgeonfish are also major contributors to ciguatera events, as is the case in French Polynesia, Cook Islands, and Kiribati. And in some cases, it should be noted that the amount of ciguatoxins found in herbivores can largely exceed those measured in carnivores. Singular types of ciguatera poisonings linked to specific regions are also described in the literature. Shark poisoning associated with high fatality rate are preferentially reported from the Indian Ocean, while marine invertebrate poisonings involving giant clams, sea urchins, lobsters, crabs, octopus are frequent in South Pacific islands and in a lesser extent in the Caribbean. The time series that are available from a limited number of ciguatera endemic countries regions reveal none of these areas show identical trends. Incidence rate appear to be decreasing in the Cook Island and Hawaii, while stable in French Polynesia, Queensland, Caribbean, and Japan. Conversely, uh, since the 2000s, an expansion of the geographical range of ciguatera is observed in the Macaronesia region, Hong Kong, New South Wales, and India as well. And this observation may merely reflect different data collection and reporting capabilities, or just uh, more efficient mitigation programs in some countries, or they may result from a complex combination of trend drivers specific to each country. 
at least four potential trend drivers have been identified. The social cultural determinants such as dietary habits and lifestyle of communities play a prominent role since the highest uh, incidence rate are consistently reported from coastal and island communities which uh, largely depend on marine resources for their subsistence. Climate change has also been linked to spikes of ciguatera cases. And one possible explanation for the current global expansion of ciguatera is that ocean warming has likely provided favorable conditions for the migration and settlement of Cambia discus in new areas. The increased uh, international tourism and fish imports uh, from ciguatera endemic areas also contribute to a wider distribution and increasing frequency of ciguatera imported cases among seafood consumers in all climate zones. To conclude, the current inefficiency of existing reporting systems in collecting and communicating ciguatera data at a global scale, combined with a nearly universal underreporting of this illness makes it impossible for now to determine whether there has been a global intensification of ciguatera events or outbreaks over the past decades. There is no uniform uh, CP trend across endemic region, but a range expansion of ciguatera to novel areas is currently observed uh, since the 2000s, which in some places is a likely consequence of ocean warming. Extensive studies on the role of other global change drivers such as ocean acidification and eutrophication on ciguatera trends are needed. And finally, several regional and international initiatives such as the Ciguatera Global Strategy have emerged recently for improved research and management of the ciguatera threat that will hopefully foster a more proactive surveillance of ciguatera at a global level. Thank you for your attention.